when you're at the right position, you feel it. So I, I know I'm getting closer to my dream.、Um, and I hope everybody who's listening to this can do the same thing. And the only way for you to get to where you want to get it, where you need to get to benefit the society and the people around you is by trying. From the cubicle to the lab, the studio to the war room, climbing the corporate ladder, or joining a scrappy startup, experience a day in the life of the jobs you want. This is the Experience a Day in the Life podcast. We interview professionals, entrepreneurs, and recent grads about what a day is actually like on the job, hour by hour, or as we like to call it, their a diddle. Spell A D I T L, which stands for a day in the life. This podcast will inspire you to gain experience beyond the classroom and launch a career of your own. We're your hosts, Chris d e b o u and Matt Poe. Welcome to part two in the two part Ready to Recruit series. In part one, we went through hour by hour a day in Polly Choi's life as a recruiting manager at K Force. In this episode, we'll take you through Polly's career journey so you know what skills and experience are necessary to land a job in recruiting. It was a long and windy road to get to the United States from Korea, but grit, hard work, and an open mindset got her to where she is today. Let's learn how she did it so you can too. Now, you grew up in Korea, right? Yep. Do you remember when you were over there? What was the first career aspiration you had? What did you want to be while you were growing up? So, when I was growing up, when I was like a five year old kid, I wanted to be the president <laughs> of South <laughs> Korea. <laughs> I definitely don't want that job anymore. <laughs> And yeah, as I was growing up, when I was a teenager, I just wanted to you know, talk to as many people as possible because I just liked it. And I wanted to be a journalist,、uh, like a reporter or a newscast. Um, so, yeah, I went to college in Korea and I was studying journalism. Um, and that was my dream job, like becoming a reporter.、Um, but then I came here 13 years ago. I couldn't speak a word in English. So <laughs> I had to find something else that I could actually speak. And that was numbers. And I wanted to be practical in terms of, you know, I want to, af- you know, after graduating, I want to be able to find a job and settle down because I wanted to be、um, living in the United States. So that's why I found accounting because I heard. Uh, I did a lot of research and I heard that, oh, if you major in accounting, you're going to find a job because there's always need in accounting. South Korea, Polly told us at the time, was very bureaucratic and male dominant in the workforce. The tides are turning nowadays, but she had to leave her home country to seek better opportunities. First stop was Canada and then New York City. A new country also meant a new name. Her birth name is Yasol, but she goes by Polly, inspired for her love of Polly Pockets as a kid. And I actually want to talk about the night that you left. What、sure. was that like? Of course. So I grew up in, I guess, middle class, maybe middle lower class family. And then as I was growing up, my mom was struggling you know, to get better financially. My dad is a mountain climber, he's a serious professional mountain climber. Mountaineer, so he never、um, really made money. He was really loving to my mom, but <laughs> he never cared about like bringing financial stuff to my mom to you know, manage the family.、Um, he didn't really do a good job there.、Um, I forgive him and I love him no matter what, but my mom had to suffer. So I always wanted to go out there and you know, learn different languages and、um, you know, learn other cultures and you know, make friends with our,、uh, different people, but I never got a chance because I Was just trying to figure out,、um, even as a kid, like, oh my God, what am I going to do to help my family if my mom managed this family financially? So I o- only dreamed about it. Some of my friends from、um, elementary school, middle school, high school went on to, I guess, Im- immigrated to other countries or went on to different schools abroad. And I was admiring that. Um, and then when I was in college studying journalism, this opportunity came along. What it was,、uh, was between Canadian and Korean embassy, they kind of agreed that, oh, every year, you know, Korea will send 500 students in college to Canada, and then they can legally work and travel all over Canada for one year. And then I applied for that, I got accepted. So that was 2005, May 25th, I left. 
And yeah, that night was very emotional, but I did not cry. <laughs> I almost did, but I didn't cry. Yeah, and it was really, it means a lot to me because I finally achieved my dream of going somewhere abroad on my own. Everybody back home and, you know, wishing me luck and, you know, doing well. Um, I started as a waitress. I could legally work in Canada and I worked at a Korean restaurant, <laughs> learn English a little bit. Still wasn't good even when I came to New York, but yeah, I stayed there for one year. I actually got accepted to one of the really good, best university in Canada. Then it was expensive and, you know, given the family situation, I had to choose a more affordable, good school for the money for my mom. Um, and then that's how I actually ended up coming to New York. And that was 2006, August 18th. With financial assistance from her mother, Polly was able to subsidize her living costs by working as a tutor and through scholarships while her mother paid for her tuition from her booming hair salon business back in Korea. Kind of seems like your ambition and drive is inherited from her. She's a strong lady. That's very inspiring. Thank you. So uh, you mentioned English wasn't the best skill you had at this point. How did you gain that skill? How did you get so good at English? I think... It's sort of like given talent um, because I didn't know how to speak English um, perfectly at back then. But for some reason, when I spoke English, even if I'm just reading off uh, the script or a book, um, people thought I was from here. I just didn't know how to speak too many things. <laughs> <laughs> I think language um, is all about vocabulary. If you know what word to pick and use, you can sort of communicate. But in terms of like how I how I sound like this um, with limited accent, I think I was always this way. So it's just something that I was born with. I I actually ask about this um, to someone like one of my professors at Baruch. Like, why am I like like this? Like, why do I have like very little accent? And then she asked me, "Do you um, play any musical instruments?" I'm like, "I do play the piano. I'm not that great, but I do." And then she's like, "Like, how how good are you?" I'm like, "I mean, I have nearly absolute pitch um, for some reason. So if I hear something, I can you know play it in the piano." And then she's like, "There you go. You have really good ear. So that's why you can make the sound, you know, sound the same." Polly was at Baruch College School of Business in New York studying accounting. The difference between her studies then in the U.S. and her studies in Korea was that she was not as distracted academically in New York as she was in Korea. Because I was like busy, you know, trying to find a way to get out of Korea. And because I was driven by the goal, which was settling down by getting a job in America, I was just so into whatever is given to me, I'm going to get it done. I'm going to nail it. I'm going to get perfect GPA. I'm going to get all the internship experience and I'm going to get it, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, curriculum wise, I was very, very well planned by school and I just followed it well as a student. What you just heard from Polly speaks to how much you can accomplish if you have a well-defined goal. Whether you're coming to America, getting started on a career, or getting a good GPA, or doing anything. And Polly put her mind to not only excelling academically, but professionally as well. She had a couple internships. One was at a CPA firm as a tax intern, and the other was at a wealth management branch of a large organization. And that probably really uh, made me take off my career because I learned a lot about American corporation, how to behave and, you know, all the co corporate cultures and how to really mingle with Americans. I learned it there and people there were just so awesome. They, I almost like consider them as like my second parents while I was in, yeah, college. Yeah, they really took care of me. So what happened was I think they wanted to hire me and I wanted to work for them. I just liked them so much. Um, but at the time um, when I was graduating, well, before I graduated, the financial crisis happened. And while well, I was an international student back then, so it's politically a risky move if you, when you're firing Americans and hiring um, foreigners, it's just not, not correct politically. So a lot of the banking organizations and financial organizations were in trouble. So I was impacted. And that's why my only hope at the time was getting a job at Big Four accounting firm because 
they need to pay tax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. They need to do audit. So yeah, they were hiring, but not banking at the time. Let's talk about leading into graduation. So graduation is a very anxious time for a lot of students. Do you remember what you were feeling? What was going through your head um, months or days before you were graduating? I think I was just really excited to graduate because I, you know, already had a job offer that I was like excited to join. You know, the big four firm. Like I finally made it there. I got an offer when I was a sophomore, so. I was ready to jump out of school, <laughs> and um, funny episode. Like I, I graduated with a perfect GPA. So, and I just I was a good student. People say, oh, people have 4.0 GPA, they're they're book smart, they're not street smart. So I just didn't like that comment. So that's why I was spending, um, you know, enough time to get the internship done and other extracurricular experience done. So I was part of the accounting society at Baruch. I was a VP. Um, I hosted a lot of events, invited a lot of companies and, you know, successfully hosted the event. Um, I just wanted to be good at everything, um, but it took a lot of discipline and planning, I guess. If this next story doesn't convince you to put yourself out there and start networking ASAP, I really don't know what will. As you heard, Polly got her first job offer as a tax consultant when she was a sophomore in college. Through the help of her mentor, Patty Park, she applied and got a scholarship. But she kind of led me through the process. Um, I tried, you know, getting tried to get interviewed at multiple companies by applying. Um, She helped me, you know, guiding me in I failed multiple interviews and at the time still I wasn't fluent in English. So I think that kind of played some part. So I was frustrated. And then she's like, Polly, you have to apply for this scholarship. You know, I think you have a really good chance. So I applied for scholarship. I just listened to her because she's such a nice person. She always trying to help me. Um, and she's my role model at the time. So I listened to her. I applied for the scholarship at the company and they gave it to me. Um, the tip is you have to have a really good story because you have to write something about why you deserve the scholarship. So I had a really good essay, you know, explaining where I'm from, why I'm here and what I want to achieve and why I deserve this. And you have to have a really good academic result. <laughs> so everything has to be there. But anyway, so I won the scholarship thanks to her, Patty. And then I um, I, I went to this convention um, and the partner who awarded me the scholarship at, at the firm, um, he happens to be the alumnus at my college, Baruch. So he's like, you made my day. And he gave me an offer eventually. It was like a dream. So do you think that was a right place at the right time type of situation? Or do you think you put yourself in that position and that's why you found good fortune? I think it's definitely my hard work. Um, I don't, I mean, of course, there may be luck, but I think you create luck. I, I'm a believer of you're creating your own luck. Um, you have to be there to take the opportunity. If you're not there, you cannot take the opportunity. (laughs) So I think it's not just the right timing, but I created that. If I, you know, was so frustrated and even though my mentor told me, um, you know, you have to apply for the scholarship. If I told her, no, Patty, I'm not going to do this because they already rejected me once. Um, I don't think I'm going to get this job or I don't think I'm going to get this um, scholarship. And if I just gave up. I might have never gotten that opportunity, but I just didn't stop. I just kept trying. So fast forward to her first job as a tax consultant working in the partnership tax division at Deloitte. If somebody says I'm a tax accountant, there are three different types of tax. One is individual income tax, which is 1040, what we all file. And there's a corporate tax and there is a partnership tax. I was aligned to the partnership tax group within uh, the big four company that I used to work for. Um, It was not my choice. They picked me and they aligned me there. And as a tax consultant in the partnership department, um, I was specifically working for hedge funds, um, which is partnership um, in terms of structure. And I, I cannot not mention jargon here, but I had to generate a lot of K-1s and partnership tax returns um, throughout the year to help those people file the taxes. So K-1, just to explain, is just a statement of income 
um, that all the partnership investors will get. So partnership, you know, invest money to anything, whatever investment vehicle that they think is a good um, strategy, and then they generate revenue. And then they need to uh, give it back to the investor who initially gave them money. So those investors will get this uh, piece of paper that's called K-1, and that shows how many, you know, how much money you have made during the year. So that is called K-1. And I had to generate thousands of them <laughs> every year <laughs> and then also uh, filing the return. Polly was there for two years and left because she grew frustrated that she was not in a client-facing role. She was strictly filing tax returns and generating K-1s rather than advising partners on their tax options. So she tried her hand at auditing at that same company, but ultimately decided to move on and work at Protivity, a management consulting firm, as a senior auditor. So in audit, there are two different, I guess, um, lines, external audit or internal audit. External audit is auditing the financial statement. And that's what the big four accounting firm auditors do. Internal audit, which uh, is what I was doing actually right before recruiting and at Protivity, is focuses on what makes up that financial within the company. So operations, internal operations, internal controls, um, and assessing the risk. Control means, you know, uh, finding out mistakes in an easy manner. Um, to explain. And then um, if there's no control, then means there's a risk of this number getting misrepresented on the financial because it's not an accurate number. So you said yourself that you love people and you're a very warm and genuine person. And I don't know, I can imagine that being an internal auditor and like looking and pointing out mistakes can have an effect on you over time. I'm sure the decisions that you made kind of trickled down into people's livelihood. How did that make you feel? And that's exactly how I um, ended up in recruiting. So, yeah, when I was an internal auditor um, at Protivity and then after that I was working for this company called Macquarie, they're all great organization, all three organizations prior to recruiting. Um, yeah, I really enjoy the fact that I was interacting more, which is what I wanted. Um, and I was traveling a lot to cool places. But then at the end of the day, you know, doing my job, you know, which is auditing, um, you're, you nailed it. Like I go in, I review what they do. I ask questions. So can you tell me uh, about what you do on a daily basis or a weekly basis? Who's checking your work? And after understanding what they do, um, what I do is I find out whether there's any gap um, in terms of control. But at the end, you know, you're pointing out people's problems. Um, and of course, nobody likes that, right? So of course, even though I did make a lot of meaningful connections, a lot of good friendships when I was an internal audit at Protivity and, and Macquarie, I you know realized I don't enjoy my job as much as I want, right? I, I'm only enjoying the perks and you know 50% of the job. Internal audit is a great, um, I guess, stepping stone to get into something else if you want to be in that organization or, uh, you know, like, remain in that corporate culture you can go into um, operation you can go to corporate development you can go to investor relations you can go to front office you can go to anywhere but for me it really wasn't really scratching where I wanted to get scratched any good invention anything good starts from our own discomfort so I thought about then what am I going to do to feel proud of myself you know doing what I'm doing I kind of realized I just want to help people like me who want to find a job um, that really fits them better. And that's how I kind of like, you know, came to a conclusion that I want to do recruiting. So I was like, huh, maybe I should give it a try. And it has a low entry barrier. You know, it's not like going into like completely different occupation. Or you have to start, um, you know, studying something again, like, you know, even getting an MBA, there's a huge opportunity cost. You have to go back to school. Uh, you have to spend two years and, you know, a lot of money. Um, recruiting is just something that I could relatively easily try. Um, and I could utilize my knowledge that I already have, you know, accounting finance um, and as a CPA. So yeah, I was like, let's give it a shot and I'll just give my everything for maybe one year and then see what happens. If nothing works and I fail, then I can always go back to audit. You know, I didn't hate it. I, I was enjoying it, but just not 100%. So my plan Z was going back to audit. 
So that was my fallback plan. Okay. But then it's been working out and I love <laughs> recruiting, so I'm still here. It was a fairly smooth process to get her first recruiting job. She had many offers from other recruiting agencies, but the salary structure and the people she'd be working with was what sold her on this first opportunity. Polly says to keep the salary plan in mind, especially if you're not a risk taker. So I was working really hard for the first six months, and then I kind of like learned more about recruiting in general. Um, I'm still learning, but I just wanted to get into a bigger organization where I could get access to big, you know, multiple sources and work with even more people. And I just had opportunity at the time, like through my friend who joined a recruiting agency, this where I'm currently working at, which is K-Force. So I got opportunity to interview with the people there. And then I really liked how K-Force is publicly traded. It's been around for um, 56 years um, and had really, really good mission. Uh, the tagline of K-Force is, we love what we do. We love who we serve. And I really liked it. I was like, wow, it's a great organization. <laughs> I'm going to give it a shot here. And yeah, I again, that's how I started. But then what really hooked me into this organization is my manager who interviewed me and the people that I met during the interview. Great, great people. You said you're constantly learning, right? Mm -hmm. Looking back over the past year and a half, what's something that you wish you knew when you first started recruiting? Recruiting at the end, it's sales job, right? So the reason I chose recruiting is because I believe in the product here, meaning I liked people and I believe in people. So I thought sales is convincing someone to buy your product or service. That's what I thought in the beginning. But it's largely about disqualifying, meaning what I do now is trying to ask the right question up front, uh, meaning, you know, what is your requirement? What are you looking for? What is your deal breaker? Why are you trying to leave or why are you trying to hire this person? What is the reason? Why is a really good question to ask. I think it's really about really finding out what's going to be the right product for my client. It's not about convincing everybody to buy this one product. It's never going to work. So now I focus more on um, matching up the right talent for the right company rather than trying to convince everybody to buy this product because it's really, really great. Because what's great, it means different things to different people. So that is the biggest thing, I think, to this date that I have learned. I thought sales was convincing, but it's actually more about disqualifying. And Polly has been working with K-Force ever since. It's kind of perfect because her background in finance and auditing helps her find the best candidates because, well, she understands them. She empathizes with them because she used to be them. In Polly's role, which you can learn more about in part one of this series, she's on the lookout for people with minimum of three years of experience in accounting or finance. As an agency recruiter, K-Force gets paid by the company hiring them to find the best candidate possible, including fees to send qualified resumes. So that means she has to be absolutely sure the candidate is 100% qualified. I recommend people who are graduating from college uh, really utilizing internet um, social media content, you know, how to best represent themselves and how to network better so that you can put yourself in front of the hiring manager or HR without, you know, approaching agency recruiters and get frustrated. Why aren't they helping me? Because most of the agency recruiters like me uh, may not be able to help, especially if you don't have any uh, work experience. Um, but just wanted to share this. Don't ever just apply and do nothing and wait. I think you know, most of the company application tracking system is built to eliminate resumes uh, for the company to make it easier. So you have to fill out every single column, otherwise you're going to get rejected. There are a lot of tricks that you don't know, uh, but, you know, you can read about these. Um, there are a lot of podcasts, there are a lot of YouTube videos, there are a lot of books um, if you're dedicated enough. Um, but I really hope people who graduate from college can learn about this trick and, you know, really <laughs> get your foot in the door before anyone else does. But um, once you have two, three years of experience in accounting finance, you can reach out to me <laughs> or other recruiters. <laughs> we can definitely help. What is next for Polly? What, what do you see in your future? I mean, 
as long as I am a recruiter, um, agency recruiter, I just want to be at K Force <laughs> as much as I can. Um, I love the people here. I love the senior leaders here. I think it's a great organization. I was never be able to say to other people that I love my job until I became a recruiter. I'm so happy with my job, what I'm doing. I feel proud to be a recruiter and I proud I'm so proud to work at K Force. So I can totally see me being at K Force for uh, extended amount of time. So my last question is looking back at your 18 year old self, you wanted to come over to the United States and get a job and have this steady career. Looking back now, are you proud of what you've become? I'm so proud of myself <laughs> you should be. being you where should I be. am, but I don't regret, you know, doing what I've done, um, you know, leaving Korea being a tax accountant, being an auditor, all those experiences make up who I am today. And that's how I connect with them better as a recruiter. And at the end of the day, whatever you do, whether you're a doctor or a housewife or a recruiter or auditor or a tax accountant, if you don't add any value to someone else's life, what's the point? I think there's no meaning. Did you put enough effort and time and, you know, sweat and tears and everything to be better and better and be really, really good at what you're doing for, I mean, people say generally 10,000 hours um, to be an expert. And after that, are you really good at it? If you're not, if you're below mediocre, even though you're trying so hard, for multiple, multiple years, maybe you're in the wrong spot. Maybe there's something else that you can do better. When you're at the right position, you feel it. So I, I know I'm getting closer to my dream. Um, and I hope everybody who's listening to this can do the same thing. And the only way for you to get to where you want to get it, where you need to get to benefit the society and the people around you is by trying. And that's why you need to start early. Um, try different hobbies or internships and other work experience, whether it's waitressing or, you know, internship at, I don't know, big corporation or um, doing an internship at a key force or other recruiting agency. You have to try. Otherwise, you'll never be able to find out. So I just want people um, to start early on trying different things and fail many times. And then if you feel like you found something that you're really good at, compared to other people, keep digging and then put 10,000, 20,000 hours and see where you go. That wraps up part two in the Ready to Recruit series. Huge thanks to Polly Choi for sharing her wisdom throughout this experience, A Day in the Life series. If you want to connect with Polly, you can do so on LinkedIn. Her profile is linked in the show notes at xaditl.com slash ready dash to dash recruit. If you haven't already, be sure to listen to part one in this series to experience a day in the life of a recruiting manager at K-Force. So they say you can't get a job without experience, but need experience to get the job. But luckily, we have quite the experience. You can join our team and experience a day in the life of the jobs you want by applying to be a student editor. Regardless of your major or amount of experience, this is the perfect stepping stone into any internship or career. Find more info and sign up at xaditl.com slash students. That's x-a-d-i-t-l dot com slash students. Thanks for listening. Head over to xaditl.com. That's xaditl.com. There you can find the show notes for this series and more A Day in the Life articles. And you can get to know us and our guests more by joining our communities on social media. Follow at xaditl on Instagram and on LinkedIn by searching for Krista Bow and Matt with one T Poe. If you learned something in this episode, please take some time to help our mission by leaving a positive rating and review of the show. Each week, we bring you a new interview series with guests from different jobs and different industries. In each series, we'll live a specific day in the life, hour by hour, and experience their career journey. So don't forget to subscribe.